everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney Morgan. Today's case that I have for you, I was actually watching the Tiger King documentary, whatever, and in that, Joe Exotic had mentioned something about the Zanesville Massacre. They really didn't go too much into detail. So to start out, I'm going to give you guys like a little rundown of what happened at the Zanesville Massacre and then at the end of this video I'm gonna give you guys like a rundown of what Joe Exotic said and his theories. A 62 year old man named Terry Thompson he was a Vietnam veteran right so once he got out of the war he got his first little tiger cub and he loved this little tiger cub so he started collecting more and more animals and he lived in Zanesville, Ohio on his own little, actually big property. It was 73 acres with his wife, Marion. And throughout the years, he had collected up to, I think it was like 56 different exotic animals. He had a bunch of different types of animals. He had lions, he had tigers, he had wolves, he had monkeys, he had bears, he had horses. He had all kinds of different exotic animals. But unfortunately, police were called quite a few times to his little like mini zoo that he had going on because people would claim that he was not taking care of these animals, that these animals were not being fed enough, that they were in dirty and unsafe conditions. And a lot of the times the animals weren't contained properly. Like the neighbors would complain that they would randomly see that his horses or bears or lions in their yard and he'd get them back and it was actually in the police reports that the police had warned Terry up to 30 times that he needed to get his property of exotic animals under control. So there were a lot of different complaints and in these complaints and different reports about his animals the neighbors would call the police and complain that like he wasn't feeding his horses properly so that when they would die, they would catch Terry feeding the dead horse corpses to the lions and tigers. Now that's, I don't think that's ever been proven, but that's definitely something that has been brought up. In 2008, Terry was arrested because apparently he was doing some like illegal gun trading or whatever. His license had been revoked. I, not really sure all the details. I didn't look too much into that, but he was arrested and he was sentenced to one year in prison for his illegal gun charges. While Terry was in prison, his wife Marion, for that whole year, she ran their little preserve, their little mini zoo, and she took care of the animals. And when Terry got out of prison, he went home and he really had a lot of problems going on with Marion. She actually ended up moving out and while he was trying to feed and maintain this little zoo that he had, he ended up falling really, really far into debt. So all within the few weeks that he was released from prison on October 18th, 2011, it is said that Terry used bolt cutters to go around to all the different cages of the animals, cut the locks, and, and he released them. And this all happened before 5 p.m. So a little bit after 5 p.m., all kinds of different reports started going into the local sheriff's station saying like, holy crap, I'm seeing lions and, and, and tigers and monkeys and wolves. And the next door neighbor was a man who was staying at his house with his mother and he had just gotten a brand new horse and he was out in the pasture with the horse and he said that he saw something out of the corner of his eye and he looked and it was a black bear. He was like, oh, it must have gotten out of Terry's zoo again, so whatever. Then he said that he feels like he's being watched, so he looks over and off in the distance on the other side of the fence he sees one of the lions like stalking him so he's internally freaking out but he's trying to maintain being cool because he's actually a retired teacher and he knew that when it comes to big scary predator animals like this you have to remain calm so this man decided that he was going to slowly at a normal pace 
go about walking his horse back to the barn. Now once he got to the barn, he got his horse in, he locked that door, and he got on the phone and he called his mother who was in the house. And he said, yo, yo, there's, there's a lion out here, you need to call the police. So his mother calls the police and she starts telling his what her son's story was about seeing the lion, seeing the bear. So as this man is stuck in this barn that's now locked, he's looking out the window and he looks out and he sees the bear. And then he sees the lion. And then he sees another bear. And then he sees a fucking tiger. And then he sees a wolf. So this man is probably like shit in his pants like I I would be I would definitely be not okay in this situation because that is completely bonkers right a police deputy finally shows up at their house and a knocking on the door trying to get this man's mother's attention and while he's standing there he turns and he looks back toward the road and he sees a freaking wolf so he slowly walks over to his police car and he grabs his rifle and the wolf starts coming toward him so he shoots it. And after he shoots this wolf and he's still toward his car, he hears a call coming on the radio from other officers in the area. They're actually next door at Terry's Little Zoo and they said that they have a lion cornered and they need backup or something, I don't know. They need backup, hey, come help us. There's a freaking lion. So as this officer pulls up to Terry's property, he sees another officer like running around the driveway, kind of crazy, like sporadic, and then he sees that there's a bear there. So he's like, whoa, crap. He tries to grab for his rifle, but it gets stuck on his computer, so he jumps out, he has his pistol, and once he steps out of his vehicle and goes to help this officer, he realizes, I'm going to have to shoot this bear, so he shoots the bear. Then he turns and he sees a lioness climbing under the fence. Then he turns and he sees a tiger. Then he turns in another direction and he sees a cougar and a lion going up the neighbor's drive. He's freaking out. He's got all kinds of animals all over the place. Lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. Yeah, I said it. Figured I'd plug that in there because fits. <laughs> so this whole time, they're kind of like on the outskirts of Zanesville. And they're seeing all these animals just crazy amounts all over the place. So they kind of did what they had to do. And they started, bang, bang, like popping off rounds and taking down these animals because there was actually a school nearby with a soccer field with a soccer game going on with children and they didn't want all these crazy exotic animals to make their way that far that way to, to, to actually get into town and cause way more damage than what they were. So unfortunately they they started just killing whatever animals that they saw. Then since all this was going on at like five or six o'clock at night the sun started to fall and it became dark very quickly so these cops are like oh crap what are we supposed to do we can't even see these animals in fear that they're going to be hunted they're trying to come up with solutions on what they should do so these police officers started using um, thermal infrared cameras to spot the animals that way they could shoot them down. And at this point, they realize that these animals are starting to hunt each other. Lions, tigers, and bears going after horses and monkeys. It's bananas. Oh my god! The herpy monkey! I completely forgot about the freaking herpy monkey! There was a herpy monkey! There was this rare breed of monkey. Mesquite, maybe? I don't know. I'm terrible at pronunciation and reading. So this crazy little monkey, he escaped and local reports had said, um, hey, be on the lookout for this monkey, but if you come into contact with him, do not touch him because he is carrying the herpy B virus. It's not harmful to monkeys, but they can like transfer it very easily to humans and it can cause brain damage, whatever. So everybody's like, oh my God, Where's the herpy monkey? There was one monkey killed in the final like count of dead bodies, 
So that might have been that monkey, but I don't think they ever really talked about the specific herpy monkey dying. So I think he died. So now there's tons of time has passed where they're just gunning down all these freaking exotic animals and the sheriff's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Where's Terry? Is he in trouble? Like, is something wrong? Did these animals hurt him? Does he need our help? So they drive back up the driveway to his property. And when the sheriff gets there, he has some of the caretakers of the zoo there with him, um, a few deputies, and they look at the zoo and they see a few animals wandering around. Now, they kind of like weigh their options, but they so they busted in and they found like five animals, tigers, lions, circling around a certain area. And they're thinking, what's over there? So they go over there and they see a human body. Now to get to that human body laying on the ground, they had to shoot the remaining animals. They get over there and they find out that it is in fact Terry. Terry's laying face up on the ground with a pistol and a gunshot wound to the head. They're assuming that Terry released the animals, that he immediately took his own life. At the end of all this madness, this chaos that happened, 50 of Terry's 56 animals were dead. What they did was they pretty much just dug a big hole on that property and, and buried all 50 of those animals. But there were six random animals that were still caged. There was one bear, three leopards, and two mesquite monkeys. I don't know. I think that's how you say it. So the next day, Marion, Terry's wife, came home to find that 50 of her animals and Terry were dead. She's losing her mind and she's begging them, please, please, please do not take the last six animals. Let me keep them. Let me take care of them. Because she was the person while he was in prison to be left with the animals in her care and they were found in such terrible, dirty conditions they did not let her keep them. People in the town and around the country, because this went, this went national, they all started judging the police, like, why did you have to kill all these animals, and blah, 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 but, like, in my opinion, would you want to go out your back door with your small children and be like, oh, that's cool, I see a mountain lion, now we're being hunted. No, you wouldn't, so, if I were a police officer, that might have been the route that I took. I don't know. I feel like I would have called some doctors in or something. Called somebody and like, let's capture these animals. Because that's naturally what they do. They don't know what's going on. But in the mix of all this chaos, the Tiger King, Joe Exotic, hears about what's going on in Zanesville. So, of course... He's trying to step in. He's trying to... I think he was actually trying to, like, get the remaining animals to help... I don't know. Whatever he was doing. He wanted in on what was going on. Joe on Exotic TV on YouTube. Remember during his show, he had all them producers over because he was filming his life and putting it up online? Well, he was talking about this. And in this video, he kind of made, like, a really good bit of sense right so he said why were the six remaining animals there are three leopards one bear the bears really not mentioned anymore but so the three leopards and the two mesquite monkeys now he says that these mesquite monkeys they cost like ten thousand dollars each so they're very valuable but he's saying that if Terry was going to let all his animals out in a fit of of, of rage and depression from his life unfortunately taking a really crappy turn he's saying that if he wanted to release them kill himself and hope that his animals eat his body whatever he claims that these animals he loved Terry loved these animals so why would he do this knowing that if he loved these animals these police were probably gonna take these animals out so Joe Exotic is claiming that this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And he says, 
if he wanted to release them and cause some damage or be eaten by his animals, the three leopards that were left in the cage makes no sense because apparently out of all the cats, a leopard is the most dangerous. And if he wanted to be eaten by his animals, he would have let them leopards out and let the leopards eat him because they would have done exactly that. Terry's dead body would have looked like a delicious snack to these leopards. And Joe claims that he actually got the police reports. And in those police reports, he says that there were so many issues. The gun that Terry supposedly used to kill himself with was found 17 feet away from his body. And the holster to that gun, which should have been on his belt, was found in his pickup truck down the driveway. He was found on the horse path, which they all claim... He wouldn't have been on the horse path. And when they looked into the gun, the gun was actually registered to one of the sheriff's deputies. The sheriff deputy that it was actually registered to, he claimed that he had sold it to Terry. And the autopsy would show that that gun was shot from the left side of Terry's head. But Terry was right-handed. So Joe Exotic thinks that Terry was killed most of his animals who were like least dangerous because the leopards weren't out. So he thinks that the least dangerous, which were still very, very dangerous, were, it was all done by like higher officials for those illegal gun charges that he was sentenced to prison for. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you believe that Joe's correct? Or do you believe that it is as literal black and white as it possibly could be? That in his depression, Terry cut all those locks and killed himself and just let everything happen. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and you subscribe so you know when I post more videos. I had such a fun time talking about this case today and I hope you guys come back and have an awesome day and I'll see you later.